He's a phenomenal pass rusher, and I have not had a chance to play alongside another dominant pass rusher. I think this move is awesome. It shows we're still in the business of winning. Oh. Skip Bayless, this question will be for you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, do you have a problem with what Terrell Suggs has said? <sighs> Stephen A., I have a problem with what my friend of me, T. Sizzle, said. I realize he's saying what needs to be said, party line, politically correct. Applaud the Ravens after they've taken so many hits for doing something semi-good. It, it's not bad, but I'm, I'm going to remind you about Doomerville. The Broncos had asked him to take a $4 million pay cut, which led to his getting really, you know, the whole story. But they asked him to take a $4 million hit. Yeah. And then he finally signed for a little bit more than the Broncos were offering in Baltimore, which was a guaranteed $12 million. It could be up to $35 million. And my bottom line to this is, T-Sizzle is being so disrespectful to a dominant pass rusher who played opposite him all last year and years before that, named Paul Kruger, who just signed a monster deal to go to the Cleveland Browns for a total of $41 million with $20 million guaranteed. $20 guaranteed. So he got a much better deal to go to Cleveland than Doomerville got to replace him in Baltimore. And T. Sizzle is saying, I'm finally playing opposite another dominant pass rusher. When Paul Kruger last year had a career high nine sacks, he had four and a half more in the postseason. Are you kidding me? Don't, don't give me another dominant. I, I think Paul Kruger was, was uh, qualifying as dominant last year, T. Sizzle. Well, I think that you're dissecting, uh, uh, you know, what T. Sizzle said a little bit too much. I mean, if you look at his statement, uh, what I took from it, I get your point that you're peeling, around, peeling out the fact that he was the best pass rusher, blah, blah, blah. What he was saying is, look at what we've lost. The key quote that stands out in my mind was the end. It shows we're still in the business of winning. So what he's alluding to more importantly than anything else, you lose Kruger, you lose Ellaby, you lose Ray Lewis to retirement, you lose Burke to retirement, you mm -hmm. lose all of these guys. You let a guy like Anquan Bolton Pollard. get away, yeah. Pollard, yeah. Benny, Bobby Williams, yeah. all of these guys. Yeah. You lose all of these folks. You are allowing the team to disintegrate before these guys' eyes to the point where they can't even spend the offseason relishing in the fact that they're Super Bowl champions. You've basically sullied the moment mm -hmm. by allowing them to worry about what, are we, what, what, are we, what do we have to look forward to? What are we going to be confronted by in a matter of months because they let all of this stuff happen? So by signing this guy, by signing, signing Dumerville, what you're essentially saying is, we're not tanking the season. We're not dismissing the future. We're not out of the business of competing for a Super Bowl championship. We're still taking this very, very seriously. And that's all I got from T. Sizzle. I get your point because you're saying he's being disrespectful to Kruger. But that's you picking out his words, every word that he says. You understand? I don't believe he meant it like that. I don't believe he meant any disrespect to Kruger. I don't believe he meant that Dumerville is better than Kruger because clearly the numbers don't show that right now. Nope. But I do believe he was making the statement that, excuse me, Dumerville can ball. We need him. And clearly by our willingness to sign him, we're not just tanking next season. We're still about the business of competing. And that's all I took from it.